Okay, just a short video. I thought I would uh, kind of go over the installing the false flat spars on the wing. Uh, it's not very difficult, it's pretty easy actually, but uh, you have to follow along the manual. And if you go to my forum post, um, I actually go step by step in some really good detail and pictures showing how this goes on. Again, this is the EX3, so this is a different false spar than the EX than the EX2 is. But essentially we're gonna take and first go along these tail ribs where these rivets are gonna go here. These are the tail ribs here. And we took a, a Sharpie and I just kind of do it like this. Same thing we're gonna do with the nose ribs. I just kind of block my fingers in, see where it's locked in over this hole. And I just kind of go along and going down the center, draw a nice fat, I use a big fat, you know, uh, Sharpie, not the little fine ones. And just give us a nice blue color, you know, down the middle, kind of right down through the rivet holes. And you're gonna do that just on this part where the uh, false flat spark is there. Because obviously when we put this up here, we wanna look down through and line these pre-drilled rivet holes with the center line of the rib. And you can just reach in you know, either side and move, move them around as you need to be until you see a nice blue line in there. Do that there, do it on this side, this end is the ribs here, and then you don't have to fool with the bottoms to see because you can see the bottoms, you know, center of that real easy or you're, or you're drilling there when you look up. So anyway, you're gonna take this, the big uh, flat false spar and it's gonna wrap completely over the spar uh, on the front back here. So again, the key with these is that before we drill these holes in here, uh, we can use the fixer or we can make really sure that the bottom is flush with the bottom of the channel, like right here. So right here is flush with it. Again, right now I've got this pulling this up tight against here. You've got these uh, tank straps that are in here. So make sure they're kind of pressed down all the way because they're gonna bulge out a little where to go over it. But you wanna make sure your flap's pulled all the way up and that this is nice and flat and flush. Before I drill them, I'm gonna do it like this, where I'm putting the clamp on the top of this, and this clamp is going underneath the spar right there, so it's holding the bottom of this completely uh, flush with the bottom of that spar. If you do that, these pre-drilled holes have always been perfect to drill right in and know you're gonna miss the bulb of the spar down here at the bottom. So, but I don't just trust the clamp before I start drilling holes, I feel just like this. And you can even take a little block of wood, um, you know, if you want to really be sure and put it up underneath there like that, where you know it's hitting the spar and then make sure your, your, your gap is, is it's, that it's down far enough that it's not pulled up. So that's one way to, to check it. But the little spar fixer you really don't need if you just make really sure that you got the skins flush with the bottom and then drill those holes. So anyway, bring it around, set it up where it's about where it's gonna go. This will be the last thing we do is drill these holes clamp it in place, go around, get the, get it on the bottom underneath your cap strip here, and uh, make sure it's just kind of in alignment. And when you go down to this edge, you'll see you want to get it with flesh with this machined, this is your machined rib that you installed here. You always, you continually take in the little square I'm gonna get here, and it's easier before you get this, this false bar here, this inboard false bar. We just, you know, put it up against uh, there and then run it up against your machine rib here where it touches. You can't now, I got everything in the way, but I did before I did it. And of course we did this really good before we put this cap strip on, you should have. So once we put this cap strip on with these rivets going through here, we should have already made sure that this machine rib was completely uh, 90 degrees, you know, perpendicular to, to the spar. So make sure you do that. Once you've got that on there, we're still not going to put the final, we're not going to attach this to it until, uh, you know, we get it all, all the other ones squared away. So bring this over. This should be, slide this bar over. It should go right flush with the outside of this machined rib here. Okay. And then go back and everything, you should be able to look through and see everything line up, all your little blue marks through these rivet holes here. So once it does and looks okay, then and everything's good up here. Then just go ahead and I drill this row, these four rivets, four here, 
Then I make sure everything's good. I come down again and look for the blue line. Do these four and then continue on around. Do the do the two that go on the outside edge here. Then there's one that goes on the bottom there. And it's like I say, it's easy there just to reach in and grab it and go. So go ahead and install all those rivets. It's just that simple. I do the same thing here. I draw a line. You see where you got these rivets, which were, we put this cap strip on, strip on here, came down this way. So I just drew the line on the cap strip there in line with the long ruler. So I knew I had the center of, of that one going too. So once we get this one done on here, then, and we know it's good. Then again, we go back and make sure we hadn't messed up our square or our perpendicular, you know, angle is 90 degrees from this machine rib. Once we do that, we're gonna come back under and here, right here, we're gonna have these two Cherry Max rivets because this is pre-drilled already. It goes on the bottom. So you just pre-drill, so you just drill through the pre-drilled hole, Max drill going up through the machine rib and install those two rivets now. That's gonna pretty much lock in your machine rib right there. Then we're gonna come back and you, I don't know if I can still see, yeah, you can see it right here. There's a little triangle right here. You see this, if you look at the figure, I think it's figure 70 or I don't think so. Anyway, you look at the figure in the manual, you know, this machine, this flat fault spar tab goes inside this little triangle like that. And it's, it is not pre-drilled anywhere because you're gonna come to the top side and just drill a, a number 30, put one of the stainless steel rivets. It's not a Cherry Max, it's just one of the stainless steel ones like we're using everywhere else. Put it down through there and we're done for now with this and the fault spar. So now your machine rib is locked in, it's really good. Now you can come back and again, looking at pre-drilled holes, this is your inboard aileron fault spar and that's your outboard right there. Everything is pre-drilled. When you put it on, you notice that it's gonna go under the tab here is gonna go under the tab on the flap fault spar. So this one goes under. You'll also see, uh, oh, this, yeah, you can see it's pre-drilled right there. So it goes inside that little triangle. So, you can, so we're gonna pre, we're gonna drill these holes later, not now. We're gonna do anything yet on this end until we get everything squared up. So that should go on there. You can see it actually is kind of flush with it, with this side here. Later, we're gonna come back and put a rivet right here through the two of them. Make sure that you pull to put this rivet up far enough so you're catching both pieces, both the aileron piece and the flap. But also you'll notice that the machine get rib gets very skinny up through there. There's not much room underneath this. So make sure you move it up far enough. If you go too low, you'll drill it go into the solid part of the machine rib and not through the open area here. So I think the manual gives you that dimension, but it's just right making sure you get an edge clearance on both of them. It would be right there. That gives you enough room. Then there's going to be another Cherry Max that's going to go in here and that's going to install it, but not now. Right now we're letting that stay because this is going to be adjusted a little bit here. Okay. So the pre-drilled holes, you can see where this goes up through here. Just kind of get it into position. I just kind of stuck one clamp up here. It's no big deal. Just push it up there for now. Go down to this end and I see I put this one on backwards because I'm just getting ready to tell you about the pre-drill. This fell off a minute ago. I didn't have it clamped, so I put it back on. This part is actually pre-drilled, so I'm gonna take this off. I haven't installed anything yet. And I'm gonna take this off and put it on top of this one. And it's the pre-drill pre here, you can see. The inboard part is pre-drilled, so this part is gonna go inside here and also on the bottom. The inboard one is the one that's pre-drilled, so the outboard one is going inside. So, so the outboard one is going on top, on the top only, and then on the bottom side and the bottom is going inside or on the bottom side underneath the outboard. Just look at the pre-drilled holes. Same thing, we go to this end, and right now we're just gonna, we made sure that end was flush with the machine rib. We're not gonna worry about this right now. Uh, the book says you can put your uh, aileron up here. I don't do it. I did it on the first couple builds and realized that you really don't need to do that. If, if you've gotten everything straight and good, it's going to be good. One thing you do want to make sure of is before you put the fixtures on here, again, is to go back with your tape measure. Measure from the flush side of this machine rib right down and hold it dead center in the middle of this 
hanger. Remember, we've done this several times now, and we finally put red Loctite on the bolt and torqued it in. So this is torqued in, but you can take this. You see, it's really flimsy. You can take it, and you can move it back and forth. So just make sure that you're still good. If that's, if that's 90 degrees perpendicular to the spar, then from there, then we're going to measure 51 and an eighth to dead center. Okay, right there. We're not going to worry about this side right now because we're actually going to move that even more. So right now we want to make sure that this is going to be tied to this and this false bar is going to tie all that together later. So I checked it. It was good. And then you go get the fixtures right here. These little fixtures just take some, you know, out, these are like some four, four dash, whatever, some quarter inch bolts and you're out of the kit, some four dash 15s. These are something. It doesn't matter. Just put those through here. You can see these go on all three of the hangers. So just stick them, just put them over there, push it up, up, and put that bolt through them. It holds it in position really nice. You can see here where it takes it up and everything's nice and flush with the tails all the way, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna do and get ready. That's all set up except for me fixing this little part right here. That's all set up and uh, ready to go. Then we're gonna come back and take the other fixture once we get, down here, we're going to go to the six and seven rib. So I know the double rib is five, so six. So this is the first rib past this one. Then we're going to take this fixture. It's pretty much the same thing, you see, except it's going to make sure everything's good. So it says take two people, and that is easier, but I do it myself because i got a big belly and I can push. So essentially, we're going to go to these two ribs, six and seven, and it fits right up in there like that too. You'll notice on this end, it's got a notch on that end right there. See that little notch? That little notch goes underneath the spar cap right there and then it should be up flush. So it should be, if, if these are all in place and everything's straight, it's pretty much there. So it's, and I'm not having to push hard or anything else, but I'll just put my stomach up on it like that and make sure it's nice and flush there, which it, which it is, not taking hardly any pressure. Then I can just hold it right there Then I can come back down and I can put drill hole here and go ahead and secure that there. And then you can go around and do the sides and the bottom. Same thing for the number seven. And then do the intermediate rib. Then it's gonna tell you to take these off and then the manual's pretty good. Then it just says then go to go to uh, six, seven, then eight and eight and nine and stop. Get that done. Once you, once you got these done, we've got these locked in. We know everything's square. Then we're gonna come back down to this one and we're gonna take it off and then we're gonna drill these holes that go into this piece here and then that'll secure this machined rib this inboard aileron will be set completely right when you go back over uh this way if you look like it says if you had the aileron and you're going to take this will come back these will come off these fixtures will come off once you got those set and you're going to end up just using this so you have to take these fixtures off that's just kind of a intermediate deal to get them all pushed up into place i guess because you really don't need them later <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to use this piece here so then these are going to come off you're going to go down through here and it tells you to do the ribs you know a couple at a time again and come back and, and do them and go to the end but what we're going to do is they say if you've got the l on here to put two washers two i think it's 416 washers so what happens is your l is going to come down to here okay and so what they're going to do instead of being the perfect 51 and an eighth they were saying add two washers because when we install the uh, aileron out here, we're going to install it up here and put a bolt through here, but we're going to put two washers in here just to give a little bit of spacing. Now, these are already designed to have, they'll have washers also. You'll see when you go to install the ailerons and the flaps, the bolts go through and they'll have washers either side. And you can adjust them and everything anyway a little bit. But in any case, it's going to come over here. So we're going to have 51 and 8 plus two 416 washers. Now, I can't, I don't remember offhand what it is, but just measure two of those washers and this is where we're going to end up setting this at it's just that distance from here to there will be 51 and 8 plus the thickness of two washers okay and and that's and once you do that once you got that set where you want it then you're going to come back see it's probably going to come out a little bit see like that it'll end up being flush i just moved this with my hand and they'll end up being flush if i put if it's flush right there it's probably going to be perfect right here with 51 and 8 plus two washers and then we're going to end it put these uh, uh, rivets in here, and then that's that's pretty much it for the flap, flap and aileron uh, false bar. So, hope it helps.